Hello, my name is Bobby. I'm calling from Raleigh. I would like Pastor Davy to please explain Mark chapter 11, verse 24, which reads, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. I know that the Lord is not going to give us everything we want. That's clear to me. So I would like Pastor Davy to give the context and just explain clearly what that scripture is saying, and hopefully I will be able to articulate it and share with others. Thank you very much. Appreciate your ministry, Pastor Davy. Well, Bobby, thank you so much for calling in with your question. And Stephen, I'm glad that you're getting nothing but easy questions today. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, yeah, that is a great question, Scott. You know, and I like the fact that she also wanted to know about the context. There's that word again. So if you back up into the chapter, Jesus is cursing the fig tree, and he's wanting to encourage the disciples' walk of faith in his word and and the word of God always being uh, fulfilled. I think it's helpful to know that when he says, look, if you have faith, if you trust the word of God, you'll be able to take that mountain and throw it into the sea, and immediately all of us wonder if we'd ever have faith strong enough to uproot a mountain and cast it into the sea. The Lord is obviously speaking with an idiom, and that's why it's in quotations, And if you go back to the first century, it was the belief, and this same expression was used of uprooting a mountain and throwing it into the sea. That expression was used for rabbis and theologians who could solve difficult problems. And it was impossible to reconcile those difficult problems, and these rabbis had the ability to think through it. And that's the idea that the Lord is perhaps suggesting here, and that is that there are some impossible situations and some difficult things for you to understand. You take them to the Lord, and the Lord will resolve them eventually. He will solve the problem eventually. He's not suggesting you're going to have enough faith to take a mountain and literally throw it into the sea. It's a euphemism for the ability to think through a difficult, impossible situation. But I think, Scott, she's also just sort of addressing, you know, the the subject of prayer at large. And I think it's helpful to keep the right perspective in prayer. In fact, if you turn over to Mark, if we stay in the same gospel account, and we look at the Lord himself praying, he says this in verse 36 of chapter 14 in the gospel by Mark. And here's the Lord praying. And what is he praying? Abba, Father, All things are possible for you. That is, you can solve impossible situations. However, for you to remove this cup from me, and this is the request of the Lord, is there any way around the dilemma of the coming separation he's going to experience with his Father? Can we solve this another way? And then he ends by saying, Yet not what I will, but what you will. When the Lord taught the disciples how to pray, he did the same thing. He taught them how to pray, to ask for the needs that they had, even daily bread. But then he points them back to the will and the glory of God. So if you can keep that in mind as you pray, yes, you present your needs to him. Yes, you have some really difficult things that need resolving. You present them to him, and you trust his word and you know he hears you and eventually acknowledge the need for his will to be done. And so I can tell you this in my own personal life, no matter what the request is, no matter how difficult the situation is, I'm going to have the thinking, the process, the perspective of, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. You see, my my prayers are not to have Stephen's will done in heaven, but to have God's will done on earth. And that's the prayer that he delights most in.